Hey YouTube, this is Suncrest Reef. Many of you probably know me from my series of Apex programming tutorials at Reef to Reef. I don't often make YouTube videos, but today I have something special to show you that will be much easier to explain in video than in a written tutorial. The Apex OSC command is a great tool to turn a device on and off in a repeating pattern based on the times you specify. But OSC can be confusing, and depending on how the timer values are specified, it can be challenging to figure out exactly when the device will turn on or off. OSC uses three timers, a leading delay timer, an active timer, and a trailing delay timer. Each of these timers are specified in minutes and seconds separated by a colon. OSC uses these three timers to control when to turn on and turn off an output on the repeating timer cycle. In this example, the three timers are zero minutes, 5 minutes and 55 minutes to turn on a dosing pump for 5 minutes each hour. What this means is that OSC will wait 0 minutes and seconds due to the leading delay, then turn the output on for 5 minutes due to the active timer, and then turn the output off for 55 minutes due to the trailing delay. This results in a 1 hour cycle starting at midnight and it repeats this process every hour forever. The action taken during the active timer is dictated by telling OSC to use on or off at the end of the command after the word then. So in this example, it's on during the active timer for 5 minutes and off for 55 minutes each hour. If you tell OSC to turn the output off during the active timer, then the output will be on during the leading delay and trailing delay, but off during the active timer. So in this example, it's off for five minutes and on for 55 minutes each hour. OSC is most commonly used to turn on during the active timer, so that's what I'll use throughout the rest of this video. The key to remember is that OSC will set the output to the state specified after the, the, the then portion of the command for the duration of the active timer, which is the second of the three timers. If you enter then on, it will turn the output on during the active timer portion of the cycle. If you enter the then off, it will turn the output off during the active timer portion of the cycle. The leading delay timer can be used to offset the start time of the active timer to turn the output on later than midnight rather than exactly at midnight. For example, if we add 30 minutes to the leading delay timer and subtract 30 minutes from the trailing delay timer, it still runs for five minutes each hour but now it turns on at 30 minutes past the top of each hour. This can be really useful when you have multiple devices running on the same cycle, but you want to stagger them so they don't run at the exact same time. Good examples would include dosing pumps or power heads. When the sum of the three timers adds up to a cycle that divides evenly into 24 hours, then the OSC will trigger the output on and off at the exact same times each day starting at midnight. In this example, the output turns on for one hour and off for three hours, adding up to a four hour cycle. Since that divides easily into 24 hours, the output is on six times per day at the exact same hours each day. But what happens if the cycle doesn't fit exactly into a 24 hour pattern? For example, if we add one hour to the trailing delay, that makes the whole cycle last five hours. That one extra hour per cycle results in five on cycles per day, but with one hour of the last cycle spilling into the next day, so, some, so tomorrow the cycle begins one hour later than it did today. But the really complicating factor is that OSC doesn't always start the cycle today at midnight. Instead, it calculates its cycle beginning at midnight on January 1st, 1996. Again, if all the timers add up to a cycle that fits evenly into 24 hours, then the start times are the same each day. But when it doesn't fit evenly into a 24-hour period, it can be nearly impossible to predict when the OSC cycle will run on any given day, since doing the math to add up each cycle since 1996 is a lot of work. To make this process easier, I created an OSC calculator in Excel. It does all the calculation for us. As you adjust the three timers, the results below will show each of the times OSC will turn the output on and off for the date specified. So if we go back to our original example with five minutes on per hour, the hourly cycles fit evenly into a 24-hour day. But now as I add one extra minute to the active timer, 
instead of five minutes, I'm making it six minutes. That shifts all the start times to begin one minute later each day, uh, one minute later each cycle, since the total cycle time is now one hour and one minute. And the first run time of the day no longer begins at exactly midnight. Instead, OSC has calculated this start time beginning on January 1st, 1996, with each cycle beginning one hour and one minute after the previous cycle. So using this calculator tool, I can enter any date to see the exact run times for that given day. So for example, for tomorrow, it happens to start at 1 a.m. The following day, it's at 12.23 a.m. and so forth. Now, if I go back to January 1st, 1996, here you can see the origin of the cycle beginning at exactly midnight on that date and then increasing each run by one hour and one minute. This calculator will also make it much easier to see how combining OSC with the if time command to override the normal cycle of OSC at certain times of the day, in particular when OSC is not running on the exact same times each day to, due to an uneven daily cycle. Here are a few other miscellaneous notes about OSC. The maximum for each of the three timers is 999 minutes and 59 seconds. That equates to 16 hours, 39 minutes, and 59 seconds. The OSC command has its own built-in on and off states, so there's no need to start your program with an initial set on or set off command. If you do place one, it will be ignored since the OSC command will override it at each phase of its cycles. The OSC command always evaluates true regardless of when it's in the on cycle or the off cycle. So if you ever want to add exceptions to your program to override OSC, be sure to add those conditions after the OSC command rather than before. Since the Apex evaluates each line of code from top to bottom with the last line that's true setting the output state, OSC would always win if it's the last line of the program. Place your if conditions after OSC. Lastly, if you're using OSC on a physical output, be sure to include a fallback command to instruct the output what to do if it loses communications with the apex. You don't want a dosing pump to get stuck in the on position if the apex is out of communications and dump a gallon of additives into your tank. Okay, that's all I have for OSC. I uploaded this calculator to uh, this calculator spreadsheet to Dropbox where anyone can download it for free using the link I, in the description below. Due to the specific Excel functions I used, it does require a version of Excel from an Office 365 subscription, so older versions of Excel won't work. If anyone out there knows of a way to port it to a web-based calculator or other tool, feel free to publish it and let me know about it. I also posted a link in the description below to all of my Apex tutorials over at reef to reef including my tutorial on the Apex timers where I cover OSC. I hope this video and this calculator tool will help you make better use of the OSC command and to remove some of the mystery surrounding its behavior. Happy reefing, everyone.